The F-22 and the U-2 have uh, essentially demonstrated to the air medical community um, how much more work we've got to do. We pretty much thought we'd figured out a lot of this stuff over the past, oh, 100 years since uh, the, the Wright brothers got going. Uh, and we thought we knew about oxygen and uh, altitude and a lot of these things. Then we started seeing, for instance, in the U-2 pilots, they started experiencing well, cognitive issues. It almost like, looked like many strokes to some extent for these folks flying these fairly sophisticated aircraft. But aircraft that had been around for almost 50 years. The aircraft were not new and they started having these problems. And as we looked closer and closer into the problem, we started figuring out that there were brain changes that had occurred probably due to either bubbles or something uh, going on inside that we weren't quite clear on. And again, the data we had was all sort of after the fact, uh, to some extent. They'd come back down from the mission, we'd check them out, we'd see these issues, but we're still trying to work out how did we get there in the first place. And uh, again, the argument we're making comes back to, it'd be kind of nice to know mid-flight rather than after flight how things are going. The F-22, little different story, newer aircraft obviously, in fact, pretty much one of the newest aircraft in the fleet, but it presents extreme physiologic challenges to the pilot. Uh, we fly higher, we fly faster. Uh, when they turn and move, they, they do it in dimensions that we've never done that before. Instead of just kind of doing one turn, you're doing what we call multi-axis. That's where you're kind of going to the right, but up and down, and I mean, it's all over the place. It's a very capable aircraft, but the question becomes, with the F-22, are we presenting new challenges that we haven't really assessed that are being captured by the pilot? Our argument is that uh, the human being is the most important, the critical piece in the aircraft performance in whether it's a commercial airliner, whether it's a fighter. Uh, you're talking about the human being, the brain, the decision maker being the one that drives it at this point. Uh, even with unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, the you know, remote piloted and so on, it's still the person sitting at the console who's driving that. If we have something go wrong with that central processing unit, okay, at this point, we need to have some sort of backup or warning and it, it would be wonderful if we could add that information flow back to the pilot, for instance, and say, we're a little worried about you, caution light, maybe you should think about taking these actions. For instance, the hypoxia part, as your oxygen level goes down, uh, it's not always apparent to some folks. It can be fairly subtle, and we've actually lost a number of aircraft where someone would pass out or become un, uh, unresponsive. They weren't quite out, but they just weren't able to make the right decisions, and therefore we got into trouble. Um, and you could see a, a, a possibility where we would have something on board the pilot that says, think about this, take these actions. 